morning. I haven't been seeing lately where a lot of people's been out doing their tallies for their gardens this year. And as I've said before, this year we had a small garden due to the fact that we were actually moving our stuff into our house around the time that everybody had been planting garden. But I still got some things in the ground. And I was blessed enough to get things from uh, friends and family that have had more than their share in their garden. So they've shared with us knowing that I've had a harder time getting things in the ground was good this year. But I am, I'm satisfied with, with how things went. I can't complain at all. But uh, I thought I would share with you what I did get out in my garden. This year we actually planted about 12 tomato plants. Tomatoes are our biggest thing that, that we plant because I make a lot of sauce and I primarily make the sauce. I can some just straight tomatoes too, whole tomatoes, but I also, but majority of mine is sauce. And then I use that sauce, you know, to make everything from spaghetti sauce to pizza sauce, lasagna, the whole nine yards. And then our tomatoes, actual tomatoes, sometimes I use those for soups um, and macaroni and tomato and different things like that. And I like to eat them just right out of the can. Salsa, Lord, don't forget salsa. Salsa's a biggie at our house. But we were fortunate enough, even though we didn't get as many out of our actual garden, our uh, friend, some friends of ours brought us about 230 pounds worth of tomatoes that I got to can. So I was very, very excited to get that. And they were my type of tomatoes. They were Roma tomatoes. I'm not sure that they were Amish paste Romas, but they were a Roma tomato. And that's my primary tomato that I like to raise is Romas. Um, as for that, here is just the regular tomatoes that I've got. And I think I, I didn't even count them. I'm sorry, I just wrote down that I got 230 pounds worth so I didn't even count my jars I'm sorry but anyway between tomatoes and then tomato sauce and next year I'll probably do a, a video on how I do my sauce because I actually really love how easy and simple my sauce is and then my dad and stepmother they gave me a bunch of okra this year and I think I got, I wrote this down, so I went, yeah, I got 12 jars of okra, pickled okra out of it. And plus I froze about four bags worth just to put in soups and stuff like that. But pickled okra is my favorite. I can sit and eat this whole jar in two days myself. So, and I just, for me, I just add a little garlic in the bottom and pepper flakes. And then I use my, um, you know, vinegar and like you're making a deal. I do. I didn't add no deal to these. Uh, I usually raise my own deal, and that's something I didn't get to do this year anyway. I do pickle a lot. We may, I had three cucumber plants, and that was more than enough. I mean, cucumbers, I don't care what kind of soil you put them in around here. They produce and produce and produce and produce and produce. So I had all kinds of tomatoes. I mean, cucumbers, and I, I use a, I make a, I usually make them by the gallons. Their refrigerator pickles and their deal, and I make a lot of relish. Relish is a big thing in our house. I made uh, eight jars of sweet relish, which I use in potato salad, uh, tuna salad, just all kinds of different things that I use sweet relish for. And I generally have to give some to some of my family members, especially my niece, who actually asked for my recipe. And then after our oh, my that makes me think of my chicken salad. I use on my chicken salad because she loves my chicken salad and she's tried other relishes, store-bought relishes and such in her chicken salad because she uses my recipe for her chicken salad. She said it ain't the same. So she, I always have to give her at least a jar of my relish every year. But I have gave her the recipe. She just hasn't had a chance to make it on her own. Um, the same person that gave us all the tomatoes gave us a bunch of peppers. I cannot figure out what they are. We're pretty sure they're crossed peppers with different things. Uh, they kind of are made like a cayenne pepper, but they didn't go as long to get red. And a lot, most of them are still green. But they ended up being a good little pepper. I use them in my uh, salsa. I usually grow jalapenos. And so where I didn't, and uh, cayenne, I, I raise cayenne and jalapenos. 
but I didn't this year so this was a good blessing to have because this is something we definitely use a lot in our house my dad and them gave me a bunch of uh, sweet potatoes I canned part of them and I still got part of them as whole I think I can't yeah I can 10 10 of these but four of those were uh, quarts and the rest were pints because it's just me and my husband I usually do pints and quarts that way if the family's all here then I got my quarts to use and usually takes a couple of those and then if it's just me and Dawn then we just open up with a little one so I was definitely blessed to get that and they ended up with a seven pound sweet potato out of their garden this year which was huge you had to see it. they gave me some huge ones it was actually the big ones that I went ahead and canned and I kept the more smaller ones to use for individual nights that you know I wanted to just cook them up and this is for quick nights and one of my neighbors gave me a very good watermelon this year and uh, after we ate it I had not had a watermelon preserve since I was a kid growing up and so uh, I started looking up recipes because I didn't remember how we did it. I remember helping my grandmother do it years ago, but I didn't know what we did or how we did it. And there's all kinds of different recipes you would be amazed. But um, I just kind of found one that I thought would suit me. And I'm bad not to stick straight to a recipe. I'm bad to just kind of tweak it for my own benefit. And with this one, I use ginger. And I asked my dad, because I gave my dad some, because it was his mother I, I made this with. It's a uh, watermelon rind uh, preserves. She, he said that she didn't add any kind of flavoring. She just done the basically sugar and water and rind. But I added some fresh ginger. Well, it wasn't fresh. It was my fresh ginger, which was ground up that I ground myself. Um, and... I put some of that in there and I think I like that but I will next time put more than what I did in it because it didn't give it enough flavor but that oh yeah and then there was my basil uh, my basil I got about a gallon's worth of of harvest off of that because I always plant that in my garden uh, to help with bugs as well as just to have so I scatter it out I ended up with a gallon of that I could have ended up with more but I just kind of just left the rest I'll be honest with you I just kind of didn't didn't do no more but I don't crush mine completely down I don't know if you can see this well let me see if I can excuse me I'm sorry I don't crush my uh, any of my herbs all the way because of the natural oils that's in it, it will, it will cause them to dry out and escape so i like to keep it as whole as possible so that's why i've got like a gallon's worth when it would probably all fit in this little jar if i just crushed it all up but i don't like to do that so that's why i've got a gallon's worth so that's pretty much what i got harvest oh i did my loofahs my loofahs done really good here considering i've done no amending to this soil here which my tomatoes, I have found out the hornworms are all over this place. I had a few over my other property, but nothing like they are here. That They just took over. They tried to take over my tomatoes. They, they definitely worked on them hard. But nothing messed with my loofah. And considering I didn't really do any kind of amending to it at all, I threw some bedding that had been in the chicken coop. But, you know, I didn't do it heavily because it didn't have time to cure out good and all that kind of good stuff. But I had three plants of loofah, and I haven't actually got all of them out of the garden yet. They're, they've definitely been frostbitten and all that, but I only, I probably got half of them out and half of them still down there. And I probably got 30 or 40, I haven't counted them, loofahs, which I still had a lot of small ones that didn't even get to the point to be able to harvest. But that's um, where all that's been. Yesterday, I don't know if you know, if you got to see my video that I did yesterday on my uh, cotton blossoms that I made. Those turned out pretty cool. Um, I ain't got them. I'm, I've laid them on this reef, but I haven't got them stuck in there like I'm wanting to put them. But it'll just kind of give you an idea what they're going to look like. So don't look at that good yet. <laughs> just know that they're there because I'm going to do arrangement I just set them on there and I don't want to be one of those people that take on a project and get part of it done and stick it there 
but it seems like that's been a lot of my life this past year just due to the fact of us getting moved into this place and working on this place constantly and all that but my um like i told you yesterday if you've seen this I put my ginger in here and my ball was ever bit as big as my fist maybe a tad bigger than my fist whenever I cut it up and put it in here and you can see now this is probably half of it just right here on the top how dry because it really whenever you do ginger it really um, shrinks up and it makes you feel like oh my gosh all that big old bulb and this is all I've got so don't feel bad if you if you do that but then after i ain't gonna put it all in there right now just because i'm videoing but afterwards then i put it in my mortar and pestle and i will crumble it up and i'll pause here for a minute and get it crumbled up some more and then i'll let you see it better so with all that said and done now it's all in this bottle there's probably i want to say three tablespoons worth in there so when you see that big bulb and then you dehydrate it and it comes down to this, you're thinking, oh my goodness. But keep in mind, it's going to be a lot more concentrated even than anything you'll buy in the store. And this is one of those things that I do crumble up because, like I said earlier with my uh, basil and especially leafy things like that, I try to leave as whole as possible. Uh, but my ginger, I do just go ahead and grind it up and have it ready to use because... There's more of a process than just crumbling it up like you would a basil leaf. And one more thing I did grow in my garden, well, two kind of, but uh, didn't do well at all, is I done my butternut squash and my zucchini. I usually always do both of those, especially my butternut. I, like, I really like butternut squash. And um, they didn't do good at all. And I planted two plants of each because usually it's kind of like cucumbers. you got more than what you want just out of that. But... Um, I got two or three zucchini off of it, and I did get three butternut off of it. And that's all I got. I don't know what happened to them, but they just didn't do well. They didn't do well at all. I have no idea why. That's a first for me because I've never had any issues with any kind of squashes. So, and it didn't look, I mean, there was bugs on them, but it didn't seem like that was really what took over them or anything. They just didn't didn't get pollinated well or something and I don't understand that because pollinators were everywhere so I don't know I'll have to figure that one out but anyway until next time I thank you guys I ask you to like my video and share my video and give me a comment if you'd like or share some things that's going on with you and your garden and things that you may even think may have happened to my poor old squash but anyway, God bless you guys. Thank you. See you again.